Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I'm uh, going live here. I'm going to wait till y'all. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's good, everybody? How are you all doing? Um, I'm going live right now because, as many of you know, the NBA champion was just decided. And so um, I thought that I would use this opportunity to talk about this championship, but not just me waxing poetic and giving my thoughts. I wanted to make sure that I brought in one of the most known Laker fan of all time, and that would be Mr. Snoop Dogg, who on this show, who on Jamel Hills Unbothered, promised that he would get a tattoo of the Lakers if they won. So we're about to be joined by Snoop. So stand by. Snoop, what's up, Aunt? What up, though? What's good with you? <laughs> I'm laying down, getting this, you know, his artwork put together. All right, let, let, all right, set the scene for us, Snoop. Uh, oh, you getting the championship trophy? Oh, with that, with that KB on the bottom. With the KB on the bottom. Now, um, I told people this at the beginning of this live, but I'm gonna reiterate it because more people are jumping in. We got thousands of people on already because you know how your name hold weight. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Snoop on Jamel Hill is unbothered last year. This is what pre pandemic you said on the show if the Lakers win it all, you are getting a Lakers tattoo, period, point blank. And you have made good on your promise. So, how does it feel to be getting this tattoo, Snoop? Well, first of all, I had to call my, my tattoo artist, uh, the one and only, the great Mr. Cartoon, to make sure he was available to do it. He's a Laker fan, too, by the way. So, okay. Uh, we found time to make time. So, you know, we putting it together. I gave him an idea of what I wanted, and he went to work as far as being creative. And, you know, it's a little sketch of what it could be. You oh, know, like the, the, that's going to uh, be nice. Larry O'Brien trophy with the Lakers ball falling through with, you know, the, what you call that right there, the gates? Okay. The heaven gates up top. And okay. KB on the bottom, because that's where, that's the foundation. KB right there, baby. So Snoop, how did you how did you come up with this idea? Why did you want the trophy? I understand why you would want Kobe, but why the trophy itself? Because the trophy symbolizes, you know, being a part of the Lakers organization, the uh, the, the many years of doing it, the um, the players that came and went that played, you know, on these championship team from the, you know, the Jerry West to the, you know, Kareem's, Magic's, all the way up to the, you know, the new squad that just did it. So it's just. Uh, a little bit of love and respect for everybody that's one on one with the Lakers organization. So you've been experiencing Lakers championship runs your whole life, you know, from Kobe and Shaq, um, uh, Magic and Kareem. So how does this one compare to the others you've experienced? This one was <clears throat> a little bit different. I say like when we beat Boston for the first time, <clears throat> that was that felt real good. But this one was different just for the simple fact that, you know, the great Kobe Bryant, you know, this season is dedicated to him and to know that he stamped LeBron before he left as far as letting everybody in L.A. know that LeBron is the one, not the two. You know what I'm saying? He got my blessings. That just made it that much more solid for him to go ahead and win it so fast like he did in two years. You know what I'm saying? He came here to, to do business. He on a four-year deal. He halfway done. and He got us to the promised land that quick. Now, you... Uh uh O'Shea Jackson Jr. Uh y'all been talking mad shit since you <laughs> Okay. Y'all been talking cat ass shit. But talk your shit though, because it's a lot of people who thought that the Clippers were actually the best team in the West at one point. Uh, well, I wanna say what's up to Marcellus Wiley <laughs> and uh, Clipper Daryl. <laughs> How sweet it is to be loved by you. <laughs> But a lot of people doubted whether or not LeBron was going to do this. A lot of people were talking about how the West was harder. This ain't the East. He's not going to be able to, to dominate the same way that he did. So how does it feel to tell people to basically kiss your ass y'all won this title? <laughs> well, you know what? You know, I'm an avid fan. So, you know, when we have a bad game, I express myself. When we have a good game, I express myself. So I love the fact that the team – appreciates my, my input as far as me being a diehard fan. Like when they have a bad shooting game, 
you know, they know I'm going to call them out. And when they do good, I'm going to give them all of theirs. And at the same time, it feels good to know that they was able to pull it together and really go to that bubble and lock in and really get focused on, you know, the things that's going on outside of the court and on the court. And for them to maintain they, you know, their level of being great, like not losing a game after holding the lead in the fourth quarter, that's some, that's some great shit right there, 57 and 0. And then the, for them to, you know, take out, I say, the Nuggets after the Nuggets hit the Clippers, you know, that to me was a real tough test. And then the Miami team, they was like a mini Golden State Warriors team because everybody could shoot threes. And Jimmy Butler was a straight dog. And it was just a, a good way to see what this team is made of and to follow LeBron's lead and to see that he is a GOAT, that he is one of the greatest to ever do it. Because to take three different franchises and win the championship is unheard of. I've been watching basketball since the 70s, and I ain't never seen nobody do what he did. You know what I'm saying? I've seen people go to other teams and win championships but not lead them and take a team from, from the bottom to the top and then, you know, bring championships to places that ain't never seen them before. So uh, I know you was doing some sad Ben Snoop, so call him out. Who owe you some money right now? <laughs> Rick Ross, where my money at? <laughs> How much you want Ross put on it, dog? 25000 That's all light. Okay. Little, you know, a little light wage. You know, he got bread. He got money. All right. Did you give him any points? Like anything? I gave him some points on he should back up out of this motherfucking deal before it's too late. <laughs> 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 now, Snoop, this was like, uh, this was such a tough year for a lot of reasons. Of course, we're dealing with the pandemic and um, all the conversations in this country that we've been having about race. But this year started with Kobe Bryant passing. So um, how much more does this championship mean? Because Kobe Bryant, um, with him no longer being with us, uh, do you feel like, you know, in many ways that this was destined to be because he you know, sort of put his stamp on the city. He's Los Angeles' favorite son. So do you feel like this was what Kobe is up in heaven politicking with God about? Yeah, got I, know, I know God don't make no mistakes, you know. Every angel he takes away, he delivers another one. So I feel like through the spirit of Kobe and Gigi and the, and the people that lost their lives on that on that day, that the Lakers organization was, was blessed with the opportunity to, to seize the moment, and they did that. They did all the preparation. They did everything that you needed to do to be ready for the moment. And then, you know, Kobe's spirit, the way he was coming to games, the way he was embracing the players, the way that he was, you know, putting his footprint on women's basketball and on fatherhood and, and fathers and daughters' relationships and just the things that he was doing outside of the box with films and, you know, his academy. Like, that, that inspired this team to want to do more than just win, but to want to be better in life. So that's what it's all about. He inspired the whole NBA this year. The whole world basically was inspired by the Kobe Bryant move. You know, you never know when the Angels going to be taken away, but when they put in their work, you know, their work speak for them even when they go. So, um, you know, of course, there's a lot of talk about legacy. Um, to be a great Laker, man, that takes a lot. You're talking about a lineage of some of the greatest players that ever played this game. So does, when does LeBron or does he, has he earned that statue outside of Staples yet? How many does he need to get one if he has it? I think what he's doing, he's going to get a statue in every place he ever won a championship because that's what he's doing. He's doing that type of work. Like, I've seen people come to the Lakers. I watched Shaq come to the Lakers, and it, it wasn't no two-year swing. It took a minute for us to get our, you know, situation together and do what we had to do. But this man came in two years, and last year, if I'm not mistaken, before he got injured, we was whooping the Golden State Warriors' ass and we had the number one seed, and we was coasting. And that's when we didn't have AD. So if he was doing all that last year, then we get right this year, we was smashing, and then the pandemic hit, and then we get in the bubble, and he gets focused, and he makes everybody around him get focused by taking the lead and being a great player. Like, even stepping to the side, allowing Rondo to come and run the point and take the lead, that just takes genius to know and understand that sometimes it's better to defer to somebody that's just as sharp as me, if not sharper than me. So between these three players, who surprised you the most? Rondo, KCP, or Dwight? Man, that's a great question. I had a conversation with Dwight Howard early in the season, and we spoke on a lot of great things as far as numerology, and, and I understand why he wears number 39 now. So I expected him to do well based off of his, you know, being in tune with life, I would say KCP because Rondo's a vet. 
And I would expect Rondo to, you know, work on his three and get his game together as far as the best pieces that he had from his overall game. But KCP, he was real disappointing early in the season. And for him to, like, just lock down and, like, focus on getting better and better and better and being ready for that moment. And he seized the moment, and he showed up every time we asked him to. So I would say KCP. He's like the, the baby MVP, if you ask me, him and Caruso. Mm, okay. Um, you know Danny Green took a lot of heat the other night when he missed that wide open ass shot. Yeah, I, I apologize to him because I went bad on him. I was the first <laughs> one to go bad on him, so I had to apologize to him. But like I say, when you're a Laker, that's what comes with the territory. You know that you got to have tough skin. You got to know and understand that these fans – have been with this organization way longer than you have. So, you know, we feel like you got to really go all out. And, like, if you do happen to miss a shot like that, the blessing is you get an opportunity to come back and redeem yourself and get it back and get that championship. And we forgive you and you forgive us and we move on like real fans and real players. Yeah. Um, so, of course, now everybody wants to talk about LeBron's overall legacy. Of course, the number one conversation is, is he better than Michael Jordan? I'm going to let you take the floor and um, give your thoughts on it, because I do have uh, a, a couple of response remarks, because I know where you're probably going with this. But what, what do you think? Do you think he's a better player than Michael Jordan? I mean, that's hard to say because they didn't play in the same era. They never played against the same competition. But if you look at what Jordan did, he played in the era where basketball was real hard and real aggressive, and there was a lot of fouls called. I mean, he had to go up against the beast in the East and the West, and the competition was, you know, a little bit more aggressive. So you got to give him respect for winning six and getting six MVPs and doing it in a time where it was unheard of to go three peats, you know, three peats back to backs. But at the same time, when you think of LeBron James and him going to three different organizations, mainly organizations that were terrible, that probably wasn't even going to the playoffs to going to the finals and winning the finals within a two year period is amazing. And then doing it, from a standpoint of, you know, being the, the head force of getting them there and winning it and driving, being the driving force on offense and defense and socialism outside of the basketball court and being a stand-up guy with no court cases, no allegations, no anything in that, that nature, and being able to create schools and opportunities and jobs and, you know, things of that nature to inspire other you know, athletes to be like him. There's so many NBA players that want to be like him right now. It's not saying it, but they're showing it. And that's because he's leading by example. So I would have to say that they both were goats in their own rights. And, but in my book, Magic Johnson was always higher than Michael Jordan than me. Because really? Yeah, because I'm a Laker, and I look at what Magic did mm -hmm. when he first came in the league. He took, he took over the control when Kareem got hurt against the 76ers in 1980. I was watching that game as a kid. And he, he played center, forward, and guard. He mm -hmm. put up 42 points, and he hit the great Dr. J in Philadelphia to win that championship in his rookie season without Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's like saying, you know, we got a one-two punch, but the number one goes down, and all of a sudden the rookie, you know, comes through and wins it all against this season vet team right here. Jordan didn't do that. His rookie season, he was good, but he wasn't that good. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? I do. I mean, and not only that, we have to look at the fact that Magic Johnson, him and Larry Bird combined single-handedly, um, they saved the NBA. I mean, Magic and Bird took the NBA off tape delay. Like, right. the, the, the games weren't even live, and they changed that. So, um, I'm not mad at you for listing Magic, but I'll say this, Snoop, and um, you can uh, respond to this, certainly. I don't think there's anything LeBron James can do, and this is not a knock, and this is not a slight. I think he's the greatest player of this generation. But I don't think it's anything that he can do to be a better, to be the best player as as Jordan did. I think Jordan's probably still number one. And trust me, it hurts my heart to say this. I'm from Detroit. I don't like to give Michael Jordan credit for shit, okay? Right, <laughs> so right. it hurts me to say this. But you lived it. I mean, it is just, it was a different thing when that dude was at the height of his career. Like, nobody else could win. Barkley couldn't. Um, you know, he beat Magic. Um, uh, Gary Payton couldn't win. They had to wait to gravy train the championship. Like, they couldn't win. So, But but back then, what LeBron is dealing with is what he wasn't dealing with. It wasn't like super teams, like the best players in the NBA all on one team. Like, it wasn't like that. It was like they were separated. You had great teams all over the league. The team LeBron James faced in the finals was like super teams. Like, he had a super team, and he was going up against a super team. 
And then you got to look at, well, you know, LeBron James went to the finals nine times in a row. In a row? Went with two different teams? So he did it over here. And, okay, I'm leaving. Then I'm going to come back to where I left y'all because y'all need me. And I'm going to take y'all to the finals a couple more times. Then I'm going to leave y'all. <laughs> go to L.A. Because Kobe and them, you know, they ain't been winning in so long. They just so terrible in L.A. right now. I'm going to fix y'all too. <laughs> he, the only, he the only motherfucker that can fix the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they need. They should have tried to get wrong. <laughs> Well, I mean, it is a different league, and I do think it's unfair to LeBron to do a straight-up comparison because it's just it's just the way you win now is just so different. To me, it's like comparing Bill Belichick to Bill Walsh. It's like it's right. a different game. Like, right. you know, it's free agency in the NFL. Bill Walsh was an innovator creating the West Coast offense. Like, it's just different. And then um, we got to look at this, too. We don't never give Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain. You know, these are guys that – did things that have never been heard of. 11 championships. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with all them points. My fucking Will Chamberlain, 100 points in one game. Like, that don't put you in that status. Like, these kind of shits have never been done before. But we forget about them because there's not a lot of footage. And one thing about black history, we bad at it. We terrible at black history. We have a forget point where we want to forget certain history and then we want to, you know, put in certain history above others. But if you really want to pay tribute to what's really real and what's fake, Bill Russell should be the one, not the two. A motherfucker that got 11 championships of that, because that's what it boiled down to when you start talking that Michael Jordan shit. Well, he got six ships and he ain't never lost. Motherfucker, Bill Russell got 11. How many did he lose? Right. Not do many. You, do you hold it against Bill Russell at all, the fact that he didn't play with the level of competition against the level of competition what Jordan saw, what Magic saw, what Bird saw, what LeBron saw. It wasn't the same. But you couldn't be. You couldn't be. Put it like this: LeBron is Bill Russell's height. They just right. size. <laughs> but I'm saying though, this, when basketball was out at that time and era, all the dynamic shit wasn't created. So it was fundamentally dribble the ball five times, pass it three times, then look for the shot. So everybody was doing the same shit. So it wasn't like. You had to be that creative, but it was still a, a game that was evenly based. Nowadays, the shit is everybody shoot threes and they passing up layups, and dynamic offenses, and pick and rolls. That shit wasn't even created back then. So it was like more difficult to even get a basket when they start limiting us and saying to, to the tall basketball players, hey, man, you can't even dunk. Why I can't dunk? Because I'm taller than y'all. Like they was trying to keep us at a disadvantage. So for us to actually succeed in them times puts us in a higher level as far as the level of right now era because right now we can do whatever we want to do. We get fouls for flops. We get this and that. You don't know what that era was like. You don't know how it was for a black man to have to go in these white arenas and be dealing with racism and dealing with all of this and then to try to have to score and then dealing with the mafia and dealing with all of that and then to be able to say, well, he had a successful career and did this and that. That to me is gold status right. to survive that. Now, I'll, I'll say this. I don't think – I think as a player, it's certainly debatable, debatable LeBron versus uh, Michael Jordan. They're two different – I mean, it's, I don't even know why we compare them anyway because they're not the same type of, the guy, type of guy. But in terms of a greater legacy, I think for sure it'll be LeBron just because of, as you mentioned, not just what he means to the game, but he's empowered other players in a way. And I'm not even talking about from a social standpoint, but Kevin Durant doesn't go to Golden State if it wasn't for LeBron. You know, Kevin Durant doesn't go to Brooklyn to be with Kyrie if it wasn't for LeBron. Kawhi doesn't go to Toronto. Kawhi doesn't come to the Clippers because LeBron gave them permission to stop waiting on these bonehead-ass GMs to build teams around him. He said, go make your own destiny. And because of that, players are much more empowered. They not only want to be dynamic basketball players, they want to be dynamic people. And LeBron deserves a lot of credit for that because – he is the face of the league, and he's given them a level of power that they never had in the NBA before, and that's something that Michael Jordan could not do. Right, but you know what I noticed about everything that's, that's real is there's always a GOAT until the next GOAT comes. Mm. And, and when the next GOAT comes, it, it lasts for as long as it lasts, and then all of a sudden you start not to hear about the one that was before him. Because before Michael Jordan, they used to talk about Dr. J, yeah, Magic, Ice Man, you know, with some names that was popping in the NBA. And then George started like drowning them out. 
And then he started drowning them all the way out. And then it was just him. And then after Jordan, it was like, okay, well, ain't nobody. Oh, who's this kid, Kobe? Oh, man, Kobe. Oh, man, he getting all up under Jordan. Jordan, Kobe. Oh, oh it's Kobe League now. Boom, Kobe run the league. Man, who is this young kid from Akron? LeBron. It's, it's LeBron. Oh, oh, it's LeBron's league now. And he been go 17 years, but it's like, who's the next one? Because there's a lot of them out there, but who got what he got? Right. No. Who got what he got? Right. Yeah, I mean, there's no player like him in the, in the game today. Like, not one. Um, it's like he was built in the lab. And the thing that's going to fuck everybody up is he's probably going to play well into his 40s. He's going to play longer than Jordan tried to because he's just – he's never been hurt. Um, he's in excellent shape. I don't see why he wouldn't with today's advancement. Um, before I let you out of here, Snoop, now, there's a lot of people that want to put asterisks on this championship. They're dumbasses. You can't put an asterisk on any championship, right? Because it's not like the Lakers weren't a favorite. It's not like they came out of nowhere. That being said – do you see this being the beginning of the new Lakers dynasty? Like, could this team win two or three in a row? I think we primed to do that. You know, I watched Golden State. I watched the Miami Heat. I watched Spurs. I watched, you know, even the Cleveland Cavaliers when LeBron went back there. I watched teams, you know, go back to back to back based off of the chemistry of loving to play with each other and loving the fact that we won it or we got close to winning it and we want to taste that again. And one thing about winning is contagious. And once you get it, you know, it becomes a part of your daily habit. Like LeBron got it. He was just trying to pass it on to everybody else, trying to give everybody the kill spill that he got, you know what I'm saying, to be able to know when it's time to close the door, when it's time to get real, when it's time to be about us, when it's time to take this, you know, constructive criticism, when it's time to receive constructive criticism. So to me, I feel like we primed to get, get to the championship at least another two, three more times. Just because this is only our second year, and regardless if the Clippers lost to the Nuggets or not, we was going to beat whoever stepped in front of us. I believe that. Um, you know, and definitely, Clippers fans, y'all got to go back to the drawing board again, man. I don't know what to tell <laughs> <laughs> y'all, man. It's like, it blows my mind. <laughs> that, uh, I know really all the talk they be having in the preseason when they be doing them NBA Today shows and ESPN and I be watching all them old basketball players that, that ain't never won a championship. Talking about, yeah, the Clippers are favored. Like, okay, that's why you ain't never won a championship. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I love Kendrick those. Perkins, though. Kendrick Perkins, I love him to death. He don't cut no motherfucking corners. He tell him like it is and not like it was. But if you don't like it, meet him in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kendrick, Kendrick, an old school goon, so he know what's I right. love him. He, I, I will play with him any day. Right. I hear you. A lot of players would. Well, look, well, Snoop, how long is that tattoo going to take? I'm going to be here for about three hours. We're going to get okay. together well, right I, now. I hope, uh, I hope you got some uh, some good stuff, some sticky with you. <laughs> Man, you know damn well. <laughs> All right. Hey, shout out your tattoo uh, artist. What's his name again? Cartoon. That's Mr. Cartoon. He do okay. the best tattoos in L.A. He's the one not the two. All right. We'll do with well, Snoop. Thanks for taking this time with me. Enjoy this championships. Keep on celebrating, brother. <laughs> Thank you, sis. I appreciate you. All right. Take care. One love. All right. All right, guys. That was Snoop Dogg um, joining me to discuss uh, this, this Lakers championship. Such a, a great feeling for a lot of Lakers fans. So, um, I'm sure they're going to be celebrating well in the next season. So if you know a Laker fan, y'all got to let them, y'all got to let them have this moment. You got to let them talk that shit because they deserve it. They're the champions and we'll see what happens next year. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in to this live. I hope you continue to support the podcast. I really appreciate the support that you've given. Um, it's really been a, a, a truly exhilarating um, thing for me to do this project. Thanks to people like Snoop who've been generous with their time in terms of, uh, um, you know, coming on the podcast or whatnot. So uh, make sure you go back. Uh, again, the podcast is available only on Spotify. Go back and listen to Snoop's interview. It was great. It was one of the best interviews that we've had on there. So make sure that you check it out. And I'm out, y'all. Y'all enjoy the rest of the night.